Hello plinkers and crossman lovers and AR trainers and everybody who wants to tinker with these guys. Here we are, I'm going to bring you the full breakdown of the AR platform. I know I promised you mod videos, but bear with me guys. Uh, I couldn't figure out which mods to do first without bringing in extra tools and stuff people might not have and if you don't have a workshop and... Anyways, uh, I never stopped tinkering during my move. I finally got a work table built and lighting set up and a new rig for my camera. And uh, I, I bought myself a R1, I bought myself a DPMS. And um, this R1 here, this guy was shooting seven inches to the right. I couldn't take out the rear takedown pin. I had to force it. Uh, I couldn't take it out manually. I had to rig a screw with duct tape and I had to push down completely just to get it out. And inside all of this, all the seams of all the moldings, there was a whole bunch of residue stuck in there. And um, I knew I had to take this guy apart and reassemble it seen as it was shooting seven inches to the right and i already could see that the quality control this guy was probably assembled the uh, the last one on friday afternoon before everybody clocked out um but i'm gonna take it all apart and put it back together and hopefully i can get all my sights the windages i had to adjust them even the crossman one where is it oh, anyway oh it's over here they so both both of them all my sights and even a red dot I had to windage them all the way to the left anyways I'm gonna stop babbling I'm sorry it's not a mod video but if you're gonna mod anything if it's the barrel the stock on your DPMS on your Bushmaster whatever you want to mod or remove or take apart you are at least gonna have to go through one or more of any of these pins and screws so uh, basic tools guys like in my mag video hammer my trick I like having a roll of duct tape so I can bang out pins into the duct tape uh, the Umarex kit like I had in my in my mag video um, all these allen keys these if you buy accessories you're gonna get an allen key with everything you just keep one of every size have a caliper handy you can measure for duplicates and they always manage to wedge in and you can clip this thing shut and you got the basic bits that you're going to need to take this all apart anything that's not in there you're going to need a semi long phillips like a number two uh, that's just for the handle uh, i like the small f having a small phillips handy there is a couple of screws here and there that might be a bit tiny like on the magazine um, I like having a wooden, just anything soft, it could be plastic, or just in case you don't want to mar something, but you want to wedge and add some torque, uh, a 1 8 punch, 1 8, uh, 1 16 punch, 1 16, uh, a small screwdriver, because you might want to get in there and it's always handy to have around uh, I like having some picks in case you need to retain a spring or just get in somewhere and hold something down or it's always handy to have around it's not necessary but y you could need it uh, there isn't much anything else in terms of basic tools that you need to take this apart and gain access to what you need to gain access to the mod stuff so I don't know how many videos there will be but I know I'm not going to put out a two hour long of me breaking it down and then reassembling it so basic right off the bat first off guys I will do a full breakdown I will be giving hints uh, not hints tips and tricks my insights how I go about doing this um, I will make videos in the next coming weeks about of this exact takedown. I'm going to reassemble it. I will give my tips and tricks. Please, guys, before you break something, always bear in mind you're, you're voiding your warranty. Whenever you take apart 
anything that's not in it you know these aren't built for tolerances and to be machined and replace parts and stuff these are our air guns they're not that expensive just even me at this moment i know there's a chance that i might take all of this apart and i could put it back together and it might not work i am taking that chance i'm confident in my skills and that's why i'm starting with the breakdown and basic tools so we're all going to start from the same point and um we'll get to the mods and we'll get to the parts that you want to mod so the first thing i'm gonna we all did, already did the field strip and as you all know there's dozens and dozens of videos already for field stripping the only thing i'm gonna add as we start the upper receiver breakdown um if you have an a4p or a bushmaster you are going to have to take out these screws right away to get rid of all the crossman plastic you need to have these two front screws out the a4 pre your muzzle device is going to come off all right i guess that's a good part by the way guys a4p bushmaster alert when you take off your muzzle device in your a4p there's going to be a muzzle shim this guy keep an uh, inner inner barrel shim. This guy keeps your inner barrel from wobbling and it prevents it from sliding back and forth. So on your A4P, it's either going to be stuck on your inner barrel. It's either going to be wedged inside your muzzle device or you're going to unscrew it and it's going to fall. So be careful guys. And the same thing goes with your Bushmaster, except on your Bushmaster, it's a plastic and it's plastic and it's black this is plastic also but the bushmaster is black it's going to be wedged right in there or it's going to stay stuck on your barrel uh, or you're going to take it off and it's going to fall to the ground so this guy is in there on your a4p or your bushmaster uh, you don't want to lose this because whatever your mod you're doing this guy is already snug fit it already already works great for any mods or if you need an accessory to make it fit if you lose this guy, your barrel is going to wobble and it's going to fall out the front. So do not lose this or break it. On the Bushmaster, you will have to remove these two front screws to actually pull out your muzzle device. Uh, the threads are in there. And your A4P, the th these screws actually go clamp on your barrel shroud. So the A4P, these guys need to be backed out. So to keep everybody on the same page, I'm just going to back these guys out. I'm not completely unthreading them. That's my other, that's one of my tips. When you're taking things apart, I never completely just remove one screw and risk there being torque on any other part. So I'm just going to back these out. And we're going to remove everything once everything is slacked. Because there might be tension and then you might strip something. And um, also, I'm 99% sure that there are no threads in this. When they assemble these, it's just a hole. They grab these screws and they just... Whack, they drive them through the plastic. I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of plastic debris inside as we take these out of the threads um, so the first thing we're going to do guys to get our hand guard and rail off the upper receiver is we're going to remove this small screw you can use a flathead or you can use a phillips i think you could probably use a robertson a square guy uh, this guy you're going to be gentle with him because as I said, I don't think there's threads in their plastic, nylon, glass fiber, whatever they call it, molding. So we're going to be gentle with this guy. And the reason we're taking this screw out right now completely is because these two screws here, once we remove these, all the tension and all the torque from your handrail will be on this pivot point here 
held in by this little tiny screw. So for disassembly, we're removing this screw first because I don't want to impart any torque onto this or anything in this, the inside assembly. We're going to keep traffic of everywhere we take things apart. That's part of the process, guys. Do not lose your pins. Do not lose your screws. If you're not being careful, you will end up with a spring or a pin or a screw and you won't be able to put it back together. And guys, don't, I'm telling you, don't pretend, don't, don't think that you're immune to losing a screw because anybody who tinkers and anybody who's plays with mechanics or has a tool shop, they'll tell you even when you're being careful, you're going to lose stuff. So, okay, I'm babbling on. Let's continue on. So these two screws here, guys, I'm not worried about these right now. Uh, these two screws here is what's holding the handrail to the upper receiver. So we're just going to gently back these guys out. See, this one's a bit tight. This one's abnormally tight. All right, so they're backed out. I'm pretty sure I could pull the handrail right off the receiver right now. Uh, whenever you pry stuff apart, guys, I'm, I'm going to have a firm hold on it, and I'm going to ease it. I'm not just going to yank on stuff. I don't want anything to pop out. I know how it is inside, but we're going to go through it together. All right, so we got our upper receiver, our handrail. If you have an R1 or a DPMS, you're going to have your inner barrel. We're going to go ahead and remove that. We're going to keep it in the same direction for everything. Great. So now we got our handrail. This isn't much. We just have a... Oh, there's still some screw. Something's still catching on this. Okay, we got our barrel shroud and we got a bunch of screws holding in our Picatinis. Just because I, it's a full breakdown, we're going to go ahead and back all of them out. I want to clean all these threads. I'll probably make a, a second part, appendix, something. Oh, that one almost came out. And I'll show you what I'm going to do to clean my threads. And uh, I told you, I'm going to reassemble all of this, guys. I'll, I'll make videos. I don't want you to guys to hurry up. If you don't have the time and if you're in a hurry. If you only have one crossman and you're worried about breaking it, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, uh, magazine video, go out and to a sporting shop or a hardware store and just buy a clear airsoft pistol that's 50 bucks. You grab one of those, take it apart, try and put it back together and make it work. Get comfortable using tools. Oh, I just lost one of my screws. Great, so that's, let's try and keep these in order. I can take all these out by hand. The reason why I, I want to keep track of these screws, they're not all the same size. And as I mentioned, I'm pretty sure they just wedge them in there. And they use, these are not standards. You can't buy these at the hardware store. So I'm pretty sure they just wedge them in there. So the threads for each screw are probably, you know, custom threads. All right, now that we got all that out, our barrel shroud is going to pop right out. Make sure you don't drop it on the floor. We're going to have our left and right Picatinny rails that are going to pop right off. And our upper handguard and lower handguard are, are going to separate. So I'll just put these to the side for now. I don't, they don't, doesn't matter if they're not in frame. Uh, 
yeah so you can see there's no screws really holding maybe they catch on the inside but uh yeah dpms and r1 you don't have to worry about these two front screws only on the a4p and the bushmaster you gotta you gotta take them out <clears throat> so the handrail removed from the upper receiver now once you have the upper receiver removed this guy is i guess what you can call the secondary part of the cham chamber your chambers in your magazine uh, but this guy is what your inner barrel slides into your inner barrel slides into there and this is what snugs fits it to your upper receiver and keeps everything straight so you can just pry that out it shouldn't be hard to get out if you do want to pry it out this is where the plast something plastic or or a wood wood pin comes in handy because you don't want to mar or make a dent or make anything any blemishes so we can just pull that out we'll put this to the side for now and there's a spring alert here guys spring alert there's a spring right here and there's only a c-clip retaining this and usually your handguard is stopping this shaft from coming out what i'm gonna do and you can buy hand uh, dust covers online uh, maybe i'll i'll swap one out and see if it fits but what i'm gonna do i'll take a bigger one i'm gonna use a long allen key a hex key yeah that's good enough and i'm gonna follow out follow through my shaft and i'm I'm going to keep a firm pressure. I'm not going to squeeze it, but I'm going to hold everything in place. Also, I'll get a close-up on the spring. That's how your spring goes. Here, that's why I said spring alert, because you don't want this guy to pop out and fly halfway across the room. So, oh. Now, you don't want to let anything... Get this lodged. So I got my. There we go. I almost lost. Sorry if I get my belly, my belly, into the shot. Oh yeah. Sorry. I'm just gonna raise it up and then I, now I'm gonna follow my pin through. Because the important part is the spring. And I'm gonna push my dust cover and the spring up onto my Allen key. Keep note of where your your shaft disappears and your spring becomes free floating. There, there you go. There's my Allen key. I get it inside the spring. Now you want to make sure you don't lose that, or it's gonna go flying halfway across the room. And there you go. All right. So we got our dust cover removed. Now the reason why I put an Allen key is because this guy only did one fling back, so we only have to twist it back a quarter turn to get it back on. You're going to be careful with this. You can put tape if you want, but if you have a work surface and no cats, you, you, can, you can lay it to the side and just remember there's a spring there. And now you can pull out your dust cover shaft. If you really want, this guy has a little notch. If you really want to, you could take off the C-clip, but it's not really necessary. This isn't hard to clean. And we're going to leave that C-clip on there. Now, the last two pins on the upper receiver are this, like the piston, the valve chamber. Not even the valve chamber. This is actually your your striker your striker pin anyways this is the genius of this build how they got all these functions to replicate okay i'm not gonna babble on these guys are amazing they're like a cross between an ar platform using a striker fired sear re bolt uh bolt release anyways so this is the other reason this is a universal alert while we're doing this i told you this not 
I didn't say to not skip through, but this is why I told you, let's go through this and because the rule of thumb usually is you're going to punch pins out, left out, and you're going to put them back in, right in. And as, and I, I checked my, all my other models. They don't use all the same pins everywhere. I can see round pins here on, on my DPMS. Uh, on this R1, there's a round pin on this side. And you can see the plastic is bulged out. It's kind of bulged out. And inside you could see some more plastic residue from the molds. So whoever assembled this just took a round pin and jammed it in from the left. But so I am going to punch it out from the left, but you can see the plastic is bulged out. I'm pretty sure that these guys are all designed to be punched uh, left out and uh, uh, sorry, left out and right in. So as a universal warning, always look at your pin before you start smacking on stuff with a hammer. Because if you shear your bore, if you break your pins, it's going to set your plinking session back a day. You're going to have to replace it. You're going to have to find a solution. And sometimes you can see there's marring. Like you'll be able to look at a pin and you'll see it's damaged. If it's damaged, that means that's where they hit it. And usually you'll see it on the on the right side. Anyways, that's beside the point. So let's get let's get this guy done. So this is the weird pin that I noticed. We're going to punch that out with a 116. And it's a rounded pin, but I checked on my Bushmaster and this guy is a flat pin. And I, I, I'm pretty sure it was right in. So bear in mind, guys, you got to keep track of your pins and you got to make sure what you're doing. You don't want to break anything or don't jerry rig any tools to replace something. I always, I highly recommend you always use the appropriate tool. So a little tap. I felt it move. I'm gonna give another little tap, and there we go. So one pin. It's right there. I'll just pop it out completely. There we go. In my duct tape. Now this one, I don't know, it's not rounded, it's flat on both sides, so I'm going to go left out, because that's how stuff's going to be. Okay, this one's tougher than the other one. It is moving. I'm going to just look on the tip of my pin. By the way, I've taken apart most of my ARs, I'm, but I've never taken apart every single part of each of my ARs. So, yeah, I can see that there's a, there seems to be, I'm going to, before I go too far, I'm going to drive it back and see what it looks like on the other side. You don't have to f force everything the first time and there's, it's always better to make sure and to take things step by step and by increment. Oh, see now it's popping out by itself. So whoever popped these guys in, they went left in. So they didn't go left out. I'm going to measure with a caliper. I'm going to clean them. I'm going to see if the pins go in and come out. I'm going to see if I could get a... A snug fit and everything all right so now this guy I got my flat pin so there's two different size pin one one is bigger than the other I'm gonna lay this out here we still got our inner striker valve there's See if I can wedge this out manually. I, yep, it's giving. Try and pry it a bit. 
Nope, that's not strong enough. Okay, this guy is really in there. And by the way, you, you don't have to go through all of this if you don't want to. Huh? I'm just doing this because I'm, I've never done a full complete breakdown. I didn't fully rehearse any of this and I don't know if I could actually get this out. But it's supposed to come out and it is coming out. I just got to keep working it. And by the way, this is the guy that all the seams on the molds from the plastic, all the crap was still in there. Okay, I might add this part into the bolt carrier group video because, like I said, I don't want to make a three hour long. So this guy is, I don't know how it's on there. There's no screws or anything, so it's probably clipped on or glued on. Oh no, there is a, it's pinned in. See, it's pinned in from the inside, but that's just plastic and it's non-functional. This guy might pop out over multiple field strips. Uh, just put some crazy glue and this will pop right back in. But these two pieces are the only non-functional parts of, of this BB gun. Uh, this I'm going to squeeze into this video. And now the last part of the upper and handrail uh, assembly is this guy. Where this tiny Phillips comes into. I'm going to try and get these little screws into focus. Now again, when you're removing screws and things are pressure fitted and you don't know how the threads go i like to i'm gonna keep pressure on both pieces i'm gonna back back out and you don't want to strip your your screws so you use the appropriate size screwdriver don't jerry rig anything you apply pressure you keep both parts firmly together so the threads follow and we're going to back each of them out one by one remember guys don't don't strip these threads and don't strip the inside of your screwdriver bit because then you got to replace so it's better to be careful Practice, get comfortable, know what you're doing. All right, these guys are pretty much backed out. And keep the pressure because if they separate and you strip out your screw while you're unscrewing it, you're going to cross thread stuff. So always be careful, guys. there's the okay so now they're all backed out I can feel they're all backed out I just got to completely unthread them and these even these screws I'm going to keep track of them because remember these are not standard threads these are all crossman threads so you never know with the quality control and everything and how much tolerances they have. So the heads of the screws should hold on that side. Oh, there's a firing direction. Uh, no, that's mag direction. So the mag direction is that way. Gonna separate. This guy, this is an important piece. Do not lose this. Do not lose these four little screws. I'm just going to lay it to the side. There's nothing on the inside. I'll show you. Nothing much on the inside. You could clean this. It's not really dirty. I'm going to keep these four screws inside. Put it to the side. Got my two pins. Uh, 
this rubber piece comes out and this is this is a really important part because this is what creates the seal once the BB is shot is fired and it creates a seal with your inner barrel so this guy needs to be really clean and uh, it, I'll get into the reassembly and my cleaning process all right so that's the upper upper breakdown with the handrail and in my further videos I'll I'll try and get a snapshot of every single piece uh in order um yep stay tuned guys uh yep that's it